What's going on guys, it's your boy Big Hero Chris back at you with another one. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, leave me a thumbs up, ring the notification bell, hit me up on Twitter, TikTok, the community post, you already know the vibes. And it's Wednesday, you already know what that means, it's time for your AEW Dynamite review. And this is the follow up to Wrestle Dream, which took place this past weekend. And I gotta say, as far as a Dynamite show that follows up a pay-per-view, this was really good. A lot of times when it comes to follow-up shows for AEW, they don't really hit the mark, you know. A lot of times you don't even remember that there was a pay-per-view that just happened. But this was a really good follow-up to Wrestle Dream, where we had the passing of the fallen dragon, Brian Danielson. May he rest, wrestle in peace as he watches us, as he looks down on us from the squared circle in the sky. And it kicked off with John Moxley at the Blackpool Combat Club or the Moxley World Order, whatever you want to call them, you know, having a follow up to what took place. And Moxley going into further detail as far as, you know, his mission statement, why he's doing what he's doing. He's pretty much saying that he's he's really tired of what AEW has become. He's tired of people being complacent that he wants wrestling to be in the image of what he wants it to be and how much he loves wrestling and how it's given him so much and he wants to provide that for the rest of the AEW roster by any means necessary and that that means you know beating up everybody if that means strangling brian danielson to death then that's what it is and he says that you know if you're willing to get down with that you know hop on and if you're not just get out of his way get out of him and the blackpool combat clubs way and boy were they all over the show i'll get into that a little bit more but after this we see the return of adam cole baby and he's giving a story time with adam cole and this is the first time we've heard anything from adam cole since the whole um devil storyline from the undisputed kingdom and since he's been back from injury and basically what AEW was doing is retconning what took place because now they've switched back roles. Adam Cole is the face, MJF is the heel. And if you put this promo in a vacuum, it works. It gets the point across that Adam Cole really hates MJF. It gets the point across that Adam Cole thinks MJF is fake. And that Adam Cole was another person that wants to show the um the young wrestlers in AEW the right way of doing things and not the MJF way of doing things. And MJ and Adam Cole said that he really wanted to expose MJF as a fraud. And he even said that means fighting evil with evil, I guess alluding to, you know, the whole devil storyline and him turning heel and him and MJF making us suffer through the whole bro Chacho storyline and arc and all that. So as far as a singular your program pro promo, he did explain, you know, his reasoning and his logic. But if you paid attention from last year all the way up until now, it's kind of shaky. I'm willing to let it slide if I'm willing just to let that whole bro Chacho thing go because I was into it up until a certain point, but after a while, I was really tired of it. So if we can kind of just like get past that and sweep this under the rug, cool. But we see MJF on the screen. He's not in the building. You know, he's saying that the MJF's revenge is not letting Adam Cole get his rematch, not letting Adam Cole wrestle him ever again. And Adam Cole's like, yeah, we'll see about that hairline boy. <laughs> So yeah, I'm expecting them to wrestle at full gear. From this point forward, everything else I'm willing to, you know, just forget it. I'm willing to do the Will Smith Men in Black Neuralizer flashy thing just to forget that whole thing ever happened and just start, you know, clean slate from this point going forward. So yeah. Something else I wish I could forget. The learning tree, Chris Jericho. So Chris Jericho lost to Mark Briscoe at um, Wrestle Dream and I figured all right hopefully this is all over but i was wrong 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 because i've noticed that a lot of chris jericho fuse go the same way he loses the first match and just and he gets the rematch out of nowhere that he doesn't deserve just to win the rematch and in this case it's going to be a rematch between him and mark briscoe next week on dynamite for the ring of honor championship in a ladder war match pretty much a ladder match and I was cool with it at Russell Dream. I was like, all right, Mark Russell is going to win and we can just move on. But I had, a, I had a nagging suspicion that Chris Jericho could have won the championship, but he didn't. But 
<sighs> spoiler alert, I think he's going to win the championship next week, man. I'm not really too happy about it, but I've made peace with it. I'm willing to accept it. I don't like it, but here we go. But from this, we get a promo with Mark Briscoe. He accepts the challenge, and this leads us to a match between FTR and Big Bill and Brian Keith. And for what it was worth, it was a pretty fun match. FTR ended up getting the win. After the match, the Outrunners come out and <laughs> they do that thing where they do the um the handshake in the middle of the ring. Oh, you son of a bitch, Dylan! You son of a bitch! And they flex and they do like this, and it gets the zoom in on the biceps and everything. So that's pretty cool. And while all this is happening, you see um, LFI watching um, FTR and the Outrunners, and I think. LFI is going to wrestle the Outrunners on Collision, if I'm not mistaken. I think I saw that graphic pop up, so cool. Good for them. I like the Outrunners. I like FCR. I like LFI, so pretty cool stuff. So after this, we see the Acclaimed, and I'm like, oh, brother. And they're talking, and as they're talking, MVP and, um, and Shelton Benjamin pull up. And, you know, MVP's been give, giving out his business cards. He's been handing things out, like um, Turkey on Thanksgiving, like he's Nino Brown. And while um, Anthony Bowens, he says, no, we don't, we're not interested in nothing you guys are selling. Max Caster puts the card in his pocket, and Anthony Bowens notices this. And I'm like, I don't, I hope this leads to a breakup. I don't think they're going to join up with um, the Hurt Business, especially because, you know, Max Caster was popping his shit <laughs> about Shelton Benjamin a few months ago on Twitter. So I don't think that's going to happen, but you know, you never know. So hopefully the acclaim ends. Hopefully Anthony Bowens can be a singles wrestler because he is great. He's a good promo. He's a good wrestler. He's good at everything. Max Caster sucks and I do not like him. But one thing I do like is women, especially black women. Queen Aminata, Mercedes, Monet, wrestling for the TBS Championship. And I don't know why they're wrestling for the TBS Championship. I don't care because the match was good. It was short. And I feel like they can run this back one more time. Maybe on pay-per-view. I wouldn't mind seeing that. But for the time that they, um, Mercedes and Queen Aminata did get, they had a really good match, man. Queen Aminata is she's showing off her power. Mercedes is just you know showing why she is the TBS champion, as well as the New Japan Strong Women's Whatever champion. So you know Mercedes ends up getting the win with the money statement, the bank statement. It's not called the bank statement no more. It's called the the statement, whatever it's called. She's not doing that other move that she used to do. I'm glad she went back to the bank statement because. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, man. And that, the original finisher she was using was broke. Stop using it. I'm glad she went back to the submission, so cool. After this, we have a backstage segment between the Young Bucks and Private Party. And Private Party said, look, man, y'all beat us before, but we want a rematch. We want to run it back. And the Young Bucks said, that doesn't work for us, brother. <laughs> there will be no rematch. We do not care how much you ask and how much you beg and how much you plead. It is not happening. So the Young Bucks take off. Stokely Hathaway pulls up and says, listen, man, if you guys would have had me in your corner, you would have won. Matter of fact, if you do get happen to get your rematch again and you don't win, private party should break up. And Stokely even threw in like a little shot at um, Mark Quinn by saying that, um, Isaiah Cassidy is the real single star, so hopefully that is a team that does not break up. I hope, I hope, I hope Private Party does not break up. They need to be tag team champions because they deserve it. They've been a day one tag team. I'm a big fan of Private Party, and they really do not need to break up, man. So, yeah, but we do get more shenanigans with the elites. The the elites. It's Kenny Omega's birthday, and the uh, and Jack Perry wishes Kenny a happy birthday by giving him a cake and then pouring intestines on on it because you know Kenny's been dealing with diverticulitis, and apparently he had to have surgery to have some of his intestines removed. So symbolism, it was disgusting, and what made it even worse was the cake looked good. <laughs> it actually was a good looking cake so i'm really disturbed by the fact that they put intestine over the cake it's a waste of good cake i'm not i'm not happy i'm not a happy camper you know who are happy campers the conglomeration they're out for a trios match against the elite the the elites and you know for what it was worth it was a fun match until it wasn't because then as orange cassidy is about to do something to one of the elite 
Wheeler Yuta comes out of nowhere and hits the Psycho Knee on Wheeler on Orange Cassidy and the Blackpool Combat Club the Mox War Order come out and they put the beat down on everybody. The Elite take off. They don't want no parts of it. They don't, they don't want no smoke. And then you have the locker room once again clearing out. But it's, it's, it's not enough, man. The BCC is too OP. They're too powerful. They're beating up everybody. Um, Marina Shafir is choking out people with her legs and, and, and belts and whatnot. And I'm like, cool <laughs> and as all this is happening <laughs> the funny part about this was you had the elite standing on the ramp you had people running past like do something well the elite's like mm -mm, no and it's crazy because the elite were doing the whole this is our company storyline first and the bcc came along and just did it way better they're taking more serious than the actual <laughs> executive vice presidents of the damn company Mosley said this is his company and we're like all right cool <laughs> you're the champion and you're bald and you have a whole coalition of people that are willing to kill people so who are we to question it versus the elite we're like, and they're like hey we're the bosses and then it was like no you're not take your sneakers and get out of here <laughs> you elite so you know the blackpool combat club take off and then after this you had a backseat segment where the elite are being questioned like yo what are y'all doing um, Daniel Garcia and Private Party pull up and they're like, what are you doing? You're the bosses, you're the, you're, you pretty much run this place and you're letting it go up in smoke at the hands of the Black Cool Combat Club. So, it's setting up, you know, it's, it's setting up the individual things, Daniel Garcia and Jungle Boy, the, um, Young Bucks and Private Party one more time. And I think they're gonna, there's gonna be a trios match next week between these, um, these six people, so... I'm not mad at it. It's setting up the future, future, future. So, as long as the right people have those titles, I'm cool. But after this, we have the AEW in-ring debut of the gold standard, the the one of the goats, man, a legend, future Hall of Famer, Shelton Dam Benjamin, as he takes on Leo Rush. And it's crazy, man. I've been watching Shelton Benjamin since he debuted in 2002. It's crazy how this man is getting better with age. He doesn't age. He looks exactly the same. Except he's a little bit more buff, but he looks the same. He moves the same. He moves even better, man. And it's crazy just seeing him watch, just watching him throw Leo Rush all over. He's taking him to Suplex City. He's hitting kicks and spin kicks and the Tebow Suplex is back, man. I'm like, dang, Shelton, don't do it to him. Shelton Benjamin gets the win, of course, of course, of course. And then after the match, MVP calls out Swerve. He says, listen, the way business went down at Russell Dream, we got to run it back because we do not like your answer. We're not satisfied with the fact that you did not accept the Hurt Syndicate's offer. So we're going to run this back again. And pretty much what it is, is it's an, a challenge. Shelton Benjamin versus Swerve. And Swerve accepts. And at two weeks on Dynamite, the Halloween edition is going to be Shelton Benjamin versus whose house? Swerve's house and I got a nagging fish a nagging fishy suspicion that um that dynamite is gonna be almighty if you catch my drift. Bobby Lashley. There you go. <laughs> so after this we get the Don Callis family. And like I said during my um uh Wrestle Dream um, review this is the first time in a long time I've actually legitimately cared about the Don Callis family because Don Callis and um, um, Brian Cage, for some reason, I, I don't know when, when did Brian Cage link up with the Don Callis family. I might be missing something. I'm, I don't know. I'm not questioning it, but OK. And um, Lance Archer pull up and they introduce Takeshita and Kyle Fletcher. And Takeshita pulls up, he's the new international champion, and he says that anytime, any place, anybody can get this work, he's he's willing to lay the smack on everybody and anybody. And then Kyle Fletcher, we're waiting for the big explanation, and he does the typical heel maneuver and says, you want an explanation? You want a reason why I betrayed my best friend, Will Ospreay? You'll never get it. You won't get it. And the crowd goes, boo, you suck, Australian boy. So then they dip out. And the Don Callis family looks more powerful. They look more dangerous than ever. I legit care about the Don Callis family. Who would have thunk it? Who knew? Look at us. Look at us. Who would have thought? Not me. 
But now, after that, we get a backstage segment with Mariah May. She's pissed off, man. She's she's she wants more competition. She she's just angry at everybody. She's angry at the fact that um Tony Storm is number one in the PWI Women's 500. She's mad that um at the media scrum nobody had any questions for her, which is confusing as hell. Like, how do you not have questions for Mariah May? But whatever. So after this, Anna J pulls up. And they get in each other's faces. Christopher Daniels tries to break it up. Um, Anna Jay goes to snap Mariah. She ducks. Christopher Daniels gets snapped across his big, dumb, chrome dome, bald head. And that made me laugh a lot. And apparently, at Battle of the Belts, it is going to be Anna Jay versus Mariah May. What do you say? I might go eat some hay. I might go lay by the bay. So we get another backstage segment featuring Ricochet. And he said he's going to be on collision this Saturday. And anybody who wants. To wants some can come get some he lays that on open challenge so hopefully it's hologram because a lot of people have been wanting this match i don't think that's gonna happen but you can only hope so after this we see another backstage beatdown from the blackpool combat club mockley ward order they're beating up the dark order they're beating up top flight <laughs> and the most hilarious part about this was after the BCC hop in their pickup truck and take off, you see John um, John Silver running after the truck like he's gonna catch it. Rumor has it he's still chasing after that after the truck now, like he's still going strong. But um, yeah, so then you have both the Dark Order and Top Flight issuing challenges for the trios championships. So I don't know who's gonna get it. Hopefully not the Dark Order because they kind of suck, but <laughs> you never know. So yeah. But this leads us to our main event, Christian Cage versus the Switchblade, Jay White. And we see the return of one of the ass boys. We don't see both of them. I hope um, the, the shorter one with the, the short hair, he's okay. We didn't see him, but, you know, it is what it is. And we got a good wrestling match between two veterans, two pros that know what they're doing in that very ring. And we had double shenanigans, double the shenanigans. On one hand, we had Kip Sabian trying to distract Christian for some reason. I don't know what's going on with him and Christian. I think ultimately he's going to end up joining the patriarchy, but all right, cool. And another dose of shenanigans was Hangman coming out and distracting Jay White. While the referee had his back turned, he had the buckshot lariat on Jay White. And what made this hilarious was he rolled out of the ring and laid like we couldn't see him like he was doing the whole Dexter Loomis Christian Cage thing like we see you we see you and your mustache but the referee didn't it didn't matter Christian Cage gets the win one two three so this is furthering that feud between Jay White and Hangman I don't know where this leaves Christian on the Jay White revenge tour but only time or so it was a good match I don't know if I would have main evented with it, but hey, it is what it is. It's not my show, so whatever, man. But with that being said, guys, what did you think of this week's episode of Dynamite? Let me know in the comment section below. Of course, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. You guys take care. Bees, I'm out. Peace.